you arrive at the inn with Icy Hot and Deku. The prince pays for three of your own rooms. Deku, being an overly generous nerd as always, offers to stay in the same room as you, but you decline. You're anxious you'll keep him awake, or make him worry too much about you. The last thing you wanted was to be a burden. It didn't help that you already felt like one. Appearing in our world out of nowhere, and needing help to return back to your own. You felt guilty about it deep down. Felt as if everyone around you was being too kind. And you didn't want to take advantage of their generosity. You tell Deku and Todoroki that you're okay. And the two of them wearily nod. Deku, with a sympathetic smile, tells you to sleep well. And that if you need anything, he's just across the hall. And with that, you gently kick the door shut and crawl into the comfortable feather bed. Sleeping wouldn't come easy to you that night. As you lay there, wrapped tightly in my cape, you worry about us. You wonder if Kirishima was okay, if I was able to save him without injury. You wanted to believe that we made it out okay. That we'd meet you in the square when the sun rose over Soterra in the morning. But... You couldn't help but to dwell on your thoughts. Your mind racing with countless outcomes. Eventually, your exhaustion overcomes you and you fall asleep for the night. You woke groggily the next morning to a knock on your door. Traveler? Are you awake? Your face was stiff with dried tears. Tch. Crying yourself to sleep over us. You barely had time to wipe them off your face before you got up to answer it. Still clutching my cape tightly around your body. Ah! Oh, um. Good morning! Oh. Aw. Oh, it looks like you had a bit of a rough night, huh? I understand. I used to worry a lot about Kachan when we were younger, you know? He'd run off for days without a word sometimes. I'd never know if he was alright until he came back home. <laughs> sometimes covered in blood. And sometimes not all of it was his own. <sighs> He's always so... <laughs> reckless. But... Despite that, he's very resilient. He'll be back, I promise. He always comes back. Hmm. I ordered some breakfast, so why don't you come down and eat? Then we can head to the square to see if Kachan and Kirishima are there. Ah, okay. Perfect. Shoto said he would meet us down there. So we can all have a meal together. You know, since this is a very fancy inn, each room has its own bath. So after we eat, you can soak in a nice warm bath before we head out for the day. Ah, I know I could use one. Traveling for days always makes you feel a little grimy, you know? Oh, there's Shoto, over at the table over there. Shoto, good morning. Izuku, traveler, good morning. They just finished bringing out the meal. Please, 
Sit. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm? Shoto, what's that parcel you have? Oh. I thought her friend could use some new clothing since their belongings were lost when they ran. I estimated your size, but if they don't fit, we can easily have them tailored. Here, please, I insist. You're quite welcome. I hope they're to your tastes. I went by what you were currently wearing. Oh, those are very nice looking clothes, Shoto. Of course. They are well made and should serve you well on your journey. I try to remember what you said about blending in, Izuku. I had the seamstress pick something that wouldn't stand out quite as much. Especially since you mentioned being kidnapped, Traveler. I thought it was a wise precaution. Ah, it is! Um, if their clothes are too expensive, they might end up being attacked. I am so sorry for that. I didn't know. Oh, no, 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 Shoto! You couldn't have known! And I still love the clothes you bought for me. They're some of my favorites, honestly. Ah, I'm glad. Now... Shall we eat before it gets cold? The set of clothing that Isiod had given you was high quality and looked as though they would fit well. So I'll give them more on that. He has a good eye for that kind of thing. Putting it aside for later, you tucked into the meal. <sighs> How you manage to eat with those two idiots endlessly crooning at each other like a pair of love-struck whelps is beyond me. After a while, though, it was obvious that Half and Half wanted to ask you something. He looked worried as Deku chattered on through the meal, obviously trying to keep you occupied. This went on for a while until you asked him what was on his mind. I was merely... Curious, is all. You said you were taken captive by bandits. Could you tell me more about them? The captain of our guard has been getting frequent reports of bandit activity lately. So I wonder if these were one and the same. But please, take your time telling us. I know it must be hard for you. It took a few moments for you to collect yourself. But you told him of our captors. Of how they had a caged wagon for our transport. And of the one who had threatened us. The man had been tall, with black hair and vicious scarring all over his body. Most noticeably the lower half of his face down to his neck. Under his eyes and his hands. It was all you could see of him then. Along with those piercing, bright turquoise eyes. As you described him, half and half seemed to become more and more worried. His brows furrowed and his eyes narrowed as he listened attentively. Dobby. Ah. Huh? Shoto, are you alright? I am. But I need to speak with the captain right away. Please, keep them company for now, Izuku. When I return, we'll go out into the square together. Hopefully we'll be able to spot his highness and his companion. And if not, then we'll head out to search for them. Mm. Of course. My apologies for the sudden departure. I have important matters to attend to. But please, continue your meal, my friends. Uh, right. Okay, Shoto. We'll be here. It might just be me overthinking things, but it kind of sounds like maybe he was familiar. 
with the bandit you described. I'm not too sure. I just hope everything's okay. I'll have to ask him about it later when he gets back. Uh, anyways, are you all done with your breakfast? Good, me too. Why don't we get you back to your room so that you can bathe and change into your new clothes? The ones you have on are a little singed in places. If you like, we can take them to get repaired. I'm sure Shoto wouldn't mind showing us to the seamstress. He tends to change up which one he goes to. I believe it has something to do with him being royalty? Ah, uh, it's a bit over my head if I'm being honest. While I don't quite understand most things when it comes to royalty, <laughs> I'm really happy that Shoto's patient with me. He really is such a nice person. Hmm. All right. Well, let's head back upstairs. I'll show you how to run the baths, since I'm assuming these baths work a little differently from the ones back in your world. Here, come on. You okay? <laughs> Kachan's cape is a little long on you. Don't trip, okay? Okay, here's your room. You can head in first. Most inns like this one have running water. Unlike the inns back in Ambermore. Back there we have to fill our baths on our own and warm them up manually. Most people just go to the hot springs back home. There we go. See? They also have magic stones here to heat the water for you. It's this little red stone on top of the tap. All you have to do is just rub your thumb over it like... This. And there. It glows like that, see? That's what lets you know that the stone is active. When it's full, all you have to do is turn the tap off and it'll deactivate itself. <laughs> it is pretty easy, isn't it? Well, I'll let you get all cleaned up and I'll meet you downstairs when you're done. Just take your time, all right? There's no hurry. Oh, I left your new clothing right there on the foot of the bed for you to change into when you're done. It didn't take long for the bath to be filled and you settled into the water. As the heat sank into your bones, you recalled the searing heat of Kirishima's flames and again, you were struck with worry. Worry that me shoving you off into the forest might have been the last time you would see either of us. Despite Deku's reassurances, you remain fearful. As you bathe, you can only hope that when you're taken to the square, you'll see us again. You finish up your bath and step out wrapping a comfortable linen towel around your body. You eye the new clothes that Icy Hot bought for you, folded on the edge of the bed like Deku had said. They're definitely not the kind of garb you wear back in your own world, but as you slip into them, you decide they're nothing you can't get used to at time. Without hesitation, you threw my cloak around yourself and made your way down to meet with Deku. Traveler? Are you feeling a bit better now? You look refreshed. Hmm. Good. I'm glad. 
There's nothing a warm bath can't fix. Here, I managed to grab a new bag for you. You can put your other clothes in there for the time being. It's never a pleasant experience having your things taken from you. So I thought it would help. Shoto, you're back. Did uh, your talk with the captain go well? Hmm. It did. He's taking the proper precautions thanks to your information, Traveler. And I do have some good news. There's someone out in the square who wishes to see you. Is it? Follow me. Your heart leapt into your chest and you were quick to jump to your feet, eagerly following the princeling out of the inn with Deku close behind. As the three of you walked through the busy streets, your eyes flickered over Iceyot's shoulder trying to see if you could spot us. The walk seemed like it took forever, winding through shops and residential streets until finally, the large fountain at the city center came into view. It was a huge monument to the might of its king, depicting him killing a dragon of all things, like it was some great heroic feat. I... I don't see them anywhere. There's so many people in the square this morning. Hmm. I think I can help. Bakugo, my friend. Where are you? Huh? I'm not your damn friend, Icy Hot! Oh, John. There he is. Right over there by the fountain. Take it easy, would you? Get off of me, outsider. I'm fine, damn it. <coughs> you worried I wasn't going to be able to handle a little dragon flame? <laughs> dragon blood runs in my veins. Kirishima couldn't hurt me if he tried. And trust me, he tried. Kachan, are you okay? You're all covered in soot and ash and blood. Tch. Happens when you spend the entire damn night fighting a dragon. Especially when you're trying to get a curse off him. <sighs> Cheeks is still here, right? I need to see her. Yeah, she's still here. She healed the traveler yesterday. But... Kachok? Why did it take you all night to remove the curse from Kirishima? Bastards put a seal on my magic when they knocked me out. Did what I could without it, but... In the end, I had to cut the damn thing out of my back. Oh. Kachok. Bakugo. <laughs> you can take that pitying tone of yours and stuff it. You too, outsider. Stop looking at me like that. I'm alive and I'm fine. Just have to get the damned witch so she can heal it. <sighs> I've had worse at any rate. Like some third-rate healing spell was going to stop me. <sighs> Anyways. Here. Manage to grab your shit from the wreckage. Idiots must have lost it when shitty scales toppled the wagon. Your gem is still there. That's what you were worried about. Now turn around. You still have that damn tracking spell on you and I need to get it off. We don't need those assholes finding us because I do not want to go through this again. Now, don't move, outsider. This is gonna be hot. Ah, here, Traveler. I'll hold your hands. Kachan's magic is... Well, you'll see. But don't worry, okay? It'll only hurt for a second. 
Stop babying them, Deku. They're a pain in my ass, but they're tougher than you think. Now stop squirming. Gotta burn this shitty spell off you. Yeah, burn. It's the only way to get it off cleanly. Now stand still already so I can get it off of you. Kachan, be nice. They're just nervous. They can handle it. Look, it's fine. The spell mark's fading. Almost done. There, see? You were belly aching over nothing. It's barely even red. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't have taken you to shitty scales with that on you. Shitty scales? Ah, uh, you know how Kachan is, Shoto. He's fond of nicknames. He's referring to his companion. <laughs> all right, all right. I can see that damn look on your face. You want to go see him, don't you? Yeah, yeah. He's doing fine. <laughs> Physically, at least. I thought he would be with you, Bakugo. I made sure to give the guards orders to let you both enter the gates. Yeah, well, your shitty guards need some damn manners beaten into them, and I almost did that for you. Uh, what happened? <sighs> they gave Kirishima a look, like he was some kind of monster. And after last night, that's the last damn thing he needed to see. <sighs> I told him to just wait outside, that I'd bring you to him. This place doesn't deserve its presence anyway. Bunch of assholes. Oh. I'm sorry that people still treat Kirishima like he's some beast. <sighs> the stupid part of it all is, is that I'm part dragon myself. But because I don't look it, people treat me like any other human. It really is pretty awful. I hope it changes someday, Kachan. For Kirishima's sake. I'm sorry. Dragons aren't trusted in Edelin. Not after the attack a couple years back. The people here, they just don't trust them. Not after the- Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. If my memory serves me right, those attacks were out of retaliation because your dunderheaded moron of a father decided to march his men out of the damn whelpling grounds and was surprised that, oh, dragons would offend their young just as any human would. Kachan, calm down. <laughs> Disgusting. Not to mention that I saved Kirishima from a cage those same men shoved him into when all he was trying to do was defend his family. They were gonna butcher him like an animal. So, I'm taking the outsider to see him. And you can stay here with Deku and see if he can help you get your head out of your ass. Let's go. Bakugo. <sighs> Damn that half and half bastard. Ugh. Well, don't you look comfy in my cape. You better not have gotten it dirty, outsider. Now here, hand it over. Oi, did you hear me or not? I said hand it over. Don't you run away from me, you little shit. Get back here. Damn it. It was only a temporary gift, you idiot. We'll see if you're laughing when I catch you. <sighs> Give me that. <sighs> Dummy. You're lucky I don't blow you the hell up for that. Now come on. I told him to meet us on the eastern hill just outside the city walls. So, if he listened to me, he should be this way. 
Come. We make our way out into one of the lush flower fields outside the walls of Edelin. You follow closely next to me. I can practically hear your damned heart beating out of your chest. You were nervous to see Kirishima, but you also wanted to see him. Desperate to know if he was okay after last night. Walking down the path, you saw a huge cherry blossom tree in the distance. It had to be around hundreds of years old. Its canopy wide and sprawling, petals fluttering down all around as the wind brushed through the valley. There, at the base of the tree, was Kirishima. His back was turned to us as we approached. He seemed smaller than before. His wings tucked tight to his body and that usual bright smile was nowhere to be seen as he slowly turned to face us. Around his neck was a faint burn mark, the evidence of my curse removal. And when his eyes met yours, you saw the pain in his eyes as they welled up with tears. Traveler, I... He barely had to open his mouth to speak to you. You were already bounding up to him. You crash into his arms, and he holds you tightly against him. But you can feel him trembling against you, as if he were holding back tears. He wouldn't let you go, but you didn't want him to. I'm sorry, Traveler. I'm... I'm so sorry. I tried to stop myself. I really did. I didn't mean to scare you or hurt you. I, I'm so sorry. Hey. They already know you had no control over yourself. You don't need to. I couldn't. I couldn't do anything but watch as I almost killed you both. It was like being trapped in my own head. Like someone else was in control of my body. I tried to stop myself, but I just... I couldn't. Everything was red. It was... I couldn't. I'm just so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please. Please don't think I'm a monster. Hey, Jiro. It's fine. I got it off you. You're fine. I'm fine. It wasn't you. You're stronger than some shitty spell. You were fighting it with everything you had. I barely had to do anything to break it properly. So just... Stop crying. Everything's alright now. And if you think for even a minute that the outsider would think you're a monster, then I must have knocked the sense out of you. Good luck getting them to leave you alone for the next week. I... I don't want them to leave me alone ever. And what am I, eh? Get an outsider and all of a sudden I'm a second thought. No! Not at all, Kotsky. Come here. Please. Huh? If you think I'm getting into that stupid hug, you're mad. Kotsky. Come here. Oi. Get your tail from around my leg, shitty scales. I said no. <clears throat> If either of you get your snot and tears on me, I'm exploding you both. <laughs> hmm. Hi. I'm so happy you're both okay. I was hunting and I heard all the commotion at our camp. It scared me. 
Especially when I heard Bakugo yelling. I ran back as fast as I could, but I got stopped by some mage. I think they tried to put a subservience spell on me. But when I tried fighting back, I guess they messed up their incantation. And I got cursed. At first, I had a little control over my body and I took out that mage, but by the time I made it back to our camp, it was ransacked. You were all gone. All I could really do was follow your sense, and when I saw those men, the rage just took over. Everything just went red. I... I tried. I tried my best to shake it, but... <laughs> I'm just glad you're both safe. If it wasn't for you, Bakugo, I think I would have been lost. <laughs> like I'd let that happen, idiot. So, stop whining so much, alright? You're fine. We're all fine. Now let me go. I gotta go see Cheeks and get my back healed. Might be able to bribe her to come out here for you too. I don't want to be in that shitty city any longer than we have to. Huh? I don't think I need her, Bakugo. <sighs> don't go trying to be all brave now. You were whining all the way back about your neck hurting. <laughs> I wasn't whining. But... It doesn't hurt anymore. Maybe the burns went down? Can you take a look for me, Traveler? Huh? What do you mean there's no burn? Come here, shitty scales. Let me see. <laughs> hey, that tickles. Stop squirming and hold still. Uh, huh? What the hell happened? It looks healed up. There isn't even any redness left. Did you drink a potion or some shit shitty scales? A potion? No, I didn't. Hang on. Let me see your back. I can't smell your wound. Ugh. The hell do you mean by that? You can smell a wound? Well, yeah. Dried blood and fresh have different smells. And all I'm getting from you is dried blood, so... Here. Turn around. Tch. You and that weird dragon nose of yours. <sighs> it doesn't hurt anymore, so... Maybe you're right. Let me move my cape out of the way. Don't get any funny ideas about stealing it, outsider. <sighs> wow. It's like you weren't even injured at all. There's no scar or anything. Does it hurt? Mm. I don't feel anything. Huh. You sure there isn't a wound? It was. Pretty damn bad before we got to Edelin. I'm sure. I'm looking right at it. Just... smooth skin. Huh. Even that little scar you had back here is gone. Huh? How strange. Are you serious? <sighs> I earned that scar, damn it. Hmm. Well, that's pretty weird. I guess all that matters now is that the three of us are all okay. <sighs> what a rough couple of days. <sighs> that's putting it mildly. We need to see if we can find some way of suppressing the magic aura that damn jewel gives off. Would have been a lot less trouble if we'd sold the thing. Well, if we went and sold it, what would the point of all of this be? 
You know, this whole journey. It's been dangerous, but I've seen you, Katsuki. You've been enjoying traveling with us like this, despite the bumps in the road. <laughs> huh? You're kidding, right? It's been hell so far. Guess getting to kick those bandits' asses was pretty enjoyable, though. <laughs> That's what I thought. <sighs> oh, man. I feel like a weight's been taken off my back now that we're all back together. And safe. I'm glad you managed to get here safely, Traveler. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out that Princeling is good for something other than staring into space and throwing his father's coin around. <sighs> we owe him thanks for getting them back here. <laughs> That's really kind of him to take you here and make sure you stayed safe. Maybe if you two go back into the city, you can give him my thanks, too. I'm not going back in there. The way they treat dragons here is goddamn barbaric. Fafinaf wants my thanks. He can come out here and get it. Hmm? Oh, you have some things to get from inside? Well, I guess I can wait for you out here. Bakugo can walk you to the gates just to avoid any accidents. Just hold on. We can deal with all of that later. Outsider. Is your stuff in a safe place right now? All right. For now, I just... I need a moment, all right? Bakugo? Both of you, sit with me for a bit. Guess I just need some time to just breathe. Oh. <laughs> okay. Guess I can't argue with that. Hmm. Here, Traveler. Sit down with us for a bit. This field's super pretty. Seems like a good spot to relax. <sighs> Come here, you two. You don't have to drape your wing over me. Uh, want me to move it? No. <laughs> okay, then. Hmm. How about you, Traveler? Are you comfy like this? I'm so glad. I really missed you guys. Ah. Just. Let's stick together from now on. Can't afford to split up and lose you idiots again. Yeah. I agree. Strength in numbers, you know? I'll admit, I was relieved that we had managed to reunite after everything that had happened to us. Our journey had just begun, and we were still so far from the Strihorn Mountains. But we've already been through so much. Bandits are selfish, ignorant bastards. Who knows what could have happened if Kirishima hadn't saved us. But even though he was the one who ultimately saved us, you could tell that he still felt guilt over what had happened back there. You could see it in the dragon's eyes. A slight sorrow that he tried to mask behind a smile. Kirishima was relieved that we were both alright, but... The guilt of what he did weighed heavy on him. We sit in silence for a while. The cool breeze rolling over our skin and soothing us. It was admittedly pretty nice. Even if I don't like sitting in one spot too long. This bit of relaxation was much deserved.
Hey, traveler. I was thinking I could give you a painted band. Kinda like the one Bakugo has there on his bicep. It helped protect you from fire. Just... You know. Just in case. This way, if things go south again, you'll be safe around Bakugo's magic and my fire. We'll be able to better protect you. <laughs> Not a bad idea, Shitty Scales. We'll handle that later. Tch, right. I forgot you don't know shit about magic. Bakugo, be nice. <sighs> Fine. I guess I can explain it. <sighs> Just... Look here, idiot. This tattoo on my upper arm. It's a sigil from the dragons. It makes me fireproof. Kirishima wants to give you one like it so that we don't have a damned repeat. Plus, I can actually use my explosion magic near you without blowing you to pieces. Huh? Oi. Don't touch it. And don't look so damn worried. He'll just paint it on. I doubt you could sit still for an actual tattoo anyway. <laughs> Even though it's technically paint, it stays on. Unless you remove it with a spell. Mm. I promise it won't hurt at all. It might feel a little tingly, but nothing painful. I just want you to be safe. Would it be okay for me to do it for you? Ah, great. When we set up our next camp, I'll try and gather everything I need to make the paint for you. Hmm. Just don't go lagging behind looking for that shit, Kirishima. We have a lot of ground to cover today. Thankfully, it's still morning. Let me go get our stuff. Well, hold on, Bakugo. We still have tons of daylight. Why don't we just keep resting here for a bit? The flowers are so beautiful and the breeze is so nice. And... I don't know. I just want to spend a bit of time with you guys before we start traveling again. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not sitting here forever. Did you forget we have a time limit? We can't be wasting this much time. Yeah, I know. Just a tiny bit longer, okay? <sighs> okay. Hmm? Where are you going? Uh, <laughs> picking some flowers, traveler? What are you doing? Some kind of weaving? Hmm. Is it? Uh. Hmm. Wow. I'm not sure what you're making, but it looks pretty neat. Is it a garland? Looks kind of short. What's that supposed to be? The hell are you doing, outsider? Uh, uh. Oh, <laughs> it's a flower crown. Wow. How do you get it to fit my head so well? Kind of comfy. Even with my horns. <laughs> Stupid. Why are you making another one? Don't even think about putting one of those dirty things on me. You can stop that shit right now. 
I said stop making it. Oi! Don't come near me with that! I don't want it! <clears throat> You're just gonna get pollen in my damned hair, outsider. Aw, Bakugo. It looks nice on you. The colors really stand out against your hair. <clears throat> don't encourage them, shitty scales. Hey, hey, don't take it off. You'll make our travelers sad. <sighs> I'm only gonna wear this something for a bit. Then it's coming off. I am not traveling with this idiotic thing on my head. <laughs> That's fair. But for now, leave it. You look kinda cute. <clears throat> huh? You wanna say that again, you half-witted lizard? You're cute? Alright, that's it! Ah! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Traveler, help! Oi! Stay out of this, outsider! I'll fight you too, you little shit! <laughs> Feeling brave, are we? Such a weakling, Kirishima! A dragon! Asking for help from a magicless human. How pathetic. <laughs> well, let's see you take down the both of us then. you two idiots. Managed to pin you both. How's that? Oh, Shoto! There they are. Kachan! Kirishima! Traveler! Oh, it's Midoriya. Ooh, you okay, Traveler? Bakugo, careful. You're squishing them. I am not. What do you two idiots want? <coughs> pin ya. <sighs> You little... <laughs> you were distracted. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting something. We... Wanted to bring the Traveler their things. Oh! You must be the Prince that Midoriya was talking about. Uh, yes, I am. You must be the dragon Midoriya mentioned. <laughs> yep, that's me. It's nice to meet you. Likewise, your highness. Thanks for looking after our traveler. We really appreciate it. Get off of me! You're heavy as hell! It was our pleasure. Mm. We... Ugh. Kinda assumed that maybe Kirishima would feel more comfortable if we just came out and returned your things, traveler. Uh, thank you, Midoriya. We also brought along some supplies for you. I know that your journey is going to be rather long. And since you were robbed... I thought it would help. Shitty scales! If you don't get off of me, I'm gonna blast you! Oops! <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> wow. Look at all this stuff. <sighs> Ken. Can I take a look inside those packs? Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Certainly. By all means. Here. Ah, thank you! Hmm. Oh, so much dried meat. This will last us a long time. Psh. Yeah, not with you around. Here, shitty scales. Let me see. Not bad. This will be fine for now. Here, outsider. They got a new weapon for you. And we are going to teach you how to use that damn oh. thing. Bow and arrows too? Those things are pretty cool if you know how to use them right. I, uh... I try to learn, but my aim is pretty bad. <laughs> hmm. There's arm guards for it too. Good. Last thing we need is you tearing up your arms trying to use it. Hmm. Tell you what, outsider. I know how to use one of these, so I'll teach you how to use it properly. Kachan's really great with a bow. 
You're in good hands, Traveler. Huh. Not as good as I am with swords and magic. <laughs> Alright, well. <clears throat> we got a lot of ground to cover. So let's get a move on, you idiots. If you two keep slacking off, our outsider here can kiss their world goodbye. Ah, uh, so mean. Huh. And thanks again, Midoriya. You too, your highness. We really appreciate it. And, well, we owe you both a debt for keeping them safe. So if you ever need help, just call on us, okay? Hmm. It's no trouble. Please, be safe, you three. There's a very dangerous forest ahead of you. Mm. The quickest way to the mountains is through. Mm. Oh no. You're right. When I was drawing up the map, I couldn't think of a safe detour around it that wouldn't add even more travel time and risk missing the alignment of the stars. Going around it would take too long, so... You three will have to go through the forests of the undead. Huh? Wait, the forests of the what? <sighs> the Hadera Forest. It's a cursed place. Some people call it the Undead Forest, full of powerful undead creatures. I'd say we could fly over the damn thing, but... I doubt you want to be snatched out of the sky by a ghoul spider. Uh, a what? You heard me. Ghoul spider. Damn things are the size of a war wagon. They live in the trees. By the thousands. Huh? They can jump 30 feet into the air. And that's how they hunt. They snatch whatever unfortunate creature flies over that damn forest. You're too young to fly high enough, long enough to get us past the damn thing. <sighs> we might have to stop by a church on the way. Get some blessed torches. It'll be the only way to get through. <sighs> and stop clinging to the outsider. You're gonna bruise them. Uh, uh, I don't want to go through there, though. Isn't there any other way? There is, but circumnavigating it would take about a month of travel, due to how massive the forest is. Going through it takes around three days, I believe. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> That's no problem. I, uh... We can do it. I'm not scared of anything. No one even said you were, Shitty Scales. From what Izuku's told me, you three don't have that kind of time. So try to be brave. For the traveler's sake. Here. Once I realized you three would need to travel through the undead forest, I wrote this sealed letter for you. There's a cathedral about three days travel from here. This will grant you the supplies to pass through safely if you present this to them. Trust me, you'll need the assistance. Most people that travel through that forest don't make it out alive. S seriously Well, we're not most people, Icy Hot. Supplies or not, we'll be fine. But, <sighs> give me that. Come on, you two. We're going. Now. Uh, bye, Kachan. Please be safe. And keep these two safe as well. Safe travels, my dearest friend Bakugo. Ugh. I'm not your friend. Now come on or I'm leaving you here. Uh, coming. Uh, thanks again, you two. For everything. I really appreciate it. All of us do. Even if Bakugo doesn't show it too well. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Kirishima. Please, keep both the Traveler and Kachan safe, okay? Mm. I promise. Nothing will ever happen to either of them as long as I'm around. <laughs> <laughs>
I believe that, Kirishima. And Traveler, it was really nice to meet you and get to know you a little. You're such a lovely person. So strong and selfless and caring. Your heart is so full of compassion. And sometimes, that's hard to come by. Please, stay safe on your travels and make it back to your homeworld. With Kirishima and Kachan taking you there, I know you'll make it. Just keep your chin up and keep shining as brightly as the stars, Traveler. <clears throat> this may be goodbye, but I won't forget you. Hmm. Make sure you learn how to use that bow. It's important that you learn to properly defend yourself on this journey. It was very nice to meet you. Both of you. <laughs> Likewise, your highness. Come here, you two. <clears throat> Oof. I'm gonna miss you guys so much. Um. Uh, uh, Kirishima, your hugs are a little tight. <laughs> that just means they're good. Uh, well, guess we should catch up to Blasty. Come on, Traveler. Let's go. He's, uh, looking pretty impatient near the tree line. <laughs> Are you idiots coming or what? We're coming! Huh. Our prince is good at most things, but patience? Not so much. <laughs> So after you two took a damn eon to say goodbye to those extras, we set back out on our way. I wasn't looking forward to the dangers that awaited us in the Hadera forest, but those bandits put us way behind. We didn't have a whole month to walk around that cesspit of the undead, so we'd have to go through it. I planned on training you with your bow on the way there, and I was going to train you hard place like that. We couldn't afford half measures. I could only hope that it would be enough. But between the protection seal Kirishima planned to paint on you, and proficiency with the bow, we'd be a lot better equipped to traverse such a treacherous forest. Despite the road ahead of us looking grim, I still had confidence that we'd complete this journey, that we'd get you back home. With everything we've already been through, I felt like we could take on whatever was thrown at us. 